Happening tomorrow, California regulators will vote on a proposal that could save some people money on their monthly PG&E bills. They include low-income earners and owners of electric cars. But under this plan, other customers could end up paying more. The new system is aimed at reducing costs for people impacted by extreme weather, like heat waves and those who charge their electric cars at home. The proposal has two parts. It would lower the usage rate by 5 to 7 cents per kilowatt hour, with rates dropping nearly 10 percent during peak hours. Under the flat rate, customers would pay about $24 a month, with discounts of up to 12 bucks for those with lower incomes. A lot of people ask, is there a way to just get rid of PG&E? Our rates have nearly doubled since 2019, which has many people frustrated and angry. Now, the city of Richmond wants Californians to be able to opt out. City leaders want to replace PG&E with a not-for-profit utility. Is that even possible? Here's NBC's Terry McSweeney. The motion passes with council members to pay to absent. The Richmond City Council voted unanimously last night to ask the state to replace PG&E, which has doubled its rates since 2019, with Golden State Energy, a nonprofit public benefit utility. We want the needs of the people put first, safety, reliability, affordability, health and climate issues come first for communities and uh, not profits. PG&E issuing a statement in response saying this type of ownership framework would not benefit customers, taxpayers, local communities, the state, or California's economy. PG&E going on to say it would cost taxpayers tens of billions of dollars in long-term debt, increase taxpayer liability in case of wildfires, and lacks critical federal and state oversight. People are looking for rate relief now. The switch from PG&E could cost lots of time and money, according to Mark Tony, the executive director of the Utility Reform Network, or TURN. He thinks it's unlikely the Richmond City Council's resolution will snowball statewide. You have to buy out the investors. You have to pay for the wires, for the poles, for the whole infrastructure. And that's a years-long process. Tony says when the Sacramento Municipal Utility District took over PG&E, it cost billions of dollars and it took decades. He says there's a faster and cheaper way to do things, and it's in the hands of state lawmakers right now. We need to hold shareholders responsible for paying 50% of all cost overruns instead of rate payers paying 100%. He's calling for a law capping rate hikes and for PG&E to choose the least expensive solution to wildfires, for example, insulating wires instead of burying them, and to put limits on PG&E spending ratepayer money for television commercials, for self-promotion. We've seen something like this before. San Francisco attempted to cut ties with PG&E in 2019 and offered a $2 billion buyout. The utility said no. In San Francisco, Terry McSweeney, NBC Bay Area News.